Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me today, as always, is the guy who makes this all happen. Uh, he's the director, producer, cameraman, IT person. He's been hanging out with me for nearly 23 years. It's my husband, Phil Gortimer. And good afternoon from sunny Sewell, New Jersey on the east coast of the United States, or the morning or the evening if you're watching us on replay. All right, what are we drinking? Mm -hmm. I've got a new cocktail for you that I'm not gonna give you the recipe today because it's gonna be an upcoming episode. We're having a honeydew martini and it's perfect for spring and summer. Nice and green and refreshing. Now you see this and you think sour apple, but it's actually melon. All right. I will bring this to you because I know you have a lot I of stuff over there. I left equipment over here today. And now let's see if I can walk all the way over there without spilling it. I did a little temporary last minute rewiring, so I got right. feet stuff over Move here. Move your phone so I can put it down. There we go. Thank you. All right. Wait, okay. Let me get us in the right picture. There right. we go. All right. Cheers, dear. Hmm. That's nice. It's interesting. It's on the sweet side. We tested on the sweet this side, yes. a few weeks ago. You probably don't remember now because we had a lot of fun testing it that night. But it's a little sweet, but it's fun. When I drink it every day, probably not, but once in a while. Let me get rid of this. Well, we'll put them over here. Out of the way. All right. And just a reminder. If you're watching us live, feel free to jump into chat. Tell us where you're uh, watching from so we can put you on our map. If you have any questions, put them in chat. And if yep. we can, we'll feature them. Yep, yep, yep. All right, today it's all about cutting boards. And you think, I know about cutting boards. Like, why? what do you need? You'd be surprised at how many questions we get about cutting boards. What should I buy? What kind should I get? How do I clean them? How do I care for them? Et cetera, et cetera. So here we are. And I will be doing a little bit of cooking and chopping today while we're doing this discussion. Um, we're having friends in for dinner right after the live stream today, well, about six o'clock. So I've already got a roast in the oven, cooking low and slow. And, nice and like we needed another excuse to put another prime rib in. Yes, Just exactly. So. Nice prime rib going low and slow and uh, I already baked a cake and, and I've got the potatoes ready to cook and I have been crazy cooking boy today. So let's talk about cutting boards with my notes. So you know, there's all kinds of cutting boards out there. There's wood, there's plastic, there's bamboo, there's glass, there's marble, all kinds of other crazy things. There's little flexible mats. What's the best one, right? That's what everyone asks. What kind should I get? And there's not necessarily a best one. And when we talk about them today, right. we are not saying just because that's the one we, we use is the best right. one. Right. But we want to talk about yep. why some are better than others and what works for you. Yeah. And I'll tell you what works for me, and then you can figure it out. What shouldn't work for anyone as a cutting board are these pretty ones that are made of glass, like this one. It's very beautiful, but it's not a cutting board. All this will do is dull your knife. It could break if you're really chopping hard Cl and- Listen to it clack. Ooh, very that rough. That hurts my soul. Yes, and it's very slippery, even though this has a texture on it, so you could easily slip and cut yourself. So hang this on a wall, plop it up on a shelf or something. Let's get rid of that. Oops. Another kind are these ones made of marble. Again, both of these are serving pieces or decorative pieces. Same thing as the glass. Very rough on your knife, very slippery. You could easily slip and cut yourself. This is good. I mean, this is clearly a serving piece, but you see those big ones made of marble. They're really great if you're doing like a pasta or making a pie dough or something because they stay cool. But for everyday use for chopping, mm, not so much. 
The people that sharpen knives will love you. Yes, yes, because you'll be having your knives sharpened a lot. So I think probably the most common kind is wood. Most of us have wood, wooden cutting boards. I'm going to show you my favorite. This is my go-to. I grab this every day. Um, it could be a little bigger. I really love this teak one underneath, and we'll get to this. Uh, but when it's just me and Phil, and I just need to chop a single onion or something, I love this guy. This is made of oak. He's got little feet on him, so he never skids or anything. It's just my go-to. And I've cut everything on this from fish to fowl, vegetables, fruits. This is just my favorite. I'm starting to show a little age. I've had this probably about 10 years. Rob says, my grandmother's house has a built-in cutting board that slides out from under the counter. Yeah, you know what? The house I grew up in had that too. And my mother rarely used it because it just, the way she had the kitchen set up, it wasn't good. But she said it was really only for bread. You wouldn't want to do a lot of chopping on it because it didn't come out and it was hard to clean. So uh, people used to use those in the days before sliced bread was a common thing and people would bake their own. That's usually what that was used for. Or at least that's what I've always been told. But they're a fascinating little, uh, little feature in some of the older kitchens. Actually, I think Lance, when Lance had his kitchen renewed, redone, he had one installed. So I guess they still make them. So I like wooden cutting boards. This is my other, one of my other favorites, this big teak guy. This is new, and I like it because it's big and chunky, and it never moves when I'm filming, and we'll talk about that too. And teak is an amazing wood to yeah. use because it resists moisture. moisture if you think yeah. about it, every mm -hmm. sauna and outdoor shower, they're all made of uh -huh. teak. And moisture is the uh, death knell of cutting boards. Yeah. Yep. And it's just, it's just a comfortable board. When I'm chopping, when I'm cutting here on the show, that's something you need to think about. Like I've always told you about your chef's knife should be comfortable in your hand. What you're chopping on shouldn't make you work too. It shouldn't, you shouldn't feel it. So this is, it's hard, but it's not hard on your blade. Whereas if you were doing it on glass or marble, it would really be tough on your blade. Another common uh, kind of wooden cutting boards is made of bamboo. Now I have this big stack here. Um, this is a whole set that we got and I, I use them here in the studio. I have a set upstairs. What I like about these is they come in all these different sizes. They're really sturdy and they all have this little well which can be handy. They have little handles which makes it easy to pick up. Now wood, listen, bamboo. This is actually a little harder than the wood and it is felt that uh, it's a little harder on your knife. You're going to need to hone and sharpen your knives a little more often than with just wood. But here's the great thing about them. This is so very renewable because uh, bamboo grows so quickly. Now, like anything else, some people say you can put these in the dishwasher. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wash all these in the sink with just some soapy water. So bamboo was popular as a cutting board because they're inexpensive. Right. They are a little harder on your knife than a hardwood board, mm -hmm. like a teak or an oak, yep. but the uh, lifespan of bamboo is not very good. Usually after about two years, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to replace it. Um, it's going to start warping, it'll probably crack, yep. even with all the ways that we'll tell you how to treat it in a bit. But even, you know, cutting boards do warp a bit. Even my little favorite guy here that I've had for 10 years is starting to warp a bit. It's just part of the game. But no, I do, I do love this set. Uh, are we leaving a link to this set? It's already there. Oh, okay. So there's a link for it because this whole set is affordable. I think it's, what, about $50 or something? Yeah, it's $50 to $49 for all five of them. Yeah. We also left a link to our teak board. Teak boards yep. are expensive. They're normally 100 and loose change. Mm -hmm. Happens to be on sale right now for about $79. Yeah. Where bamboo boards, you might have for a couple years. Teak boards can last 20 to 25 years. Yeah. Now, most of these 
cutting boards. Well, not this set because these are new and I haven't been using them much except down here in the studio. But the set I have upstairs in the kitchen, I have little rubber feet on most of them. Because I have so many sizes and I have this guy and a couple others upstairs, I don't worry about having to flip them over and cut on the other side. So I put little rubber feet on them. And this is and related. there you go. How do you keep a cutting board from sliding around the counter? That's the easiest way. Sometimes they have these little feet where you can buy the little stick-on feet. Another good way, like my big teak guy here, this has nice handles in the sides, which really helps. This is a little heavy, but I can flip this over. And here's how I do it. Now, this is that shelf liner stuff. You have some in your drawer. Yes, I do. Whoops, wrong drawer. It comes in tubes like this, and you can just cut it down to whatever size you want. It comes in all kinds of different colors, too. And you can find this just about anywhere. I mean, Walmart, Target, Big Lots, uh, just about anywhere. But it's great because it doesn't move around. If you can't find that, you can use a damp dish towel um, to keep your stuff from moving. Otherwise, this could slide around, and that would be dangerous. Oh, Rich, I'm so disappointed in you. What? I don't bother with cutting boards. I just cut stuff on a plate or in the pan. Hmm. You know, my mother had one cutting board and it was about this size. And she would oftentimes sit in her favorite chair with it on her lap and cut stuff and it would drive me up a wall because oh, so unsafe. So my father, whenever it was time to cut a roast, or anything like that, they would put the roast on the serving platter and he would carve it right on the platter. And their knives, he was always complaining about the slicing knife being dull and, and there's always that scrooch sound. Yeah, so don't do that. It's not good for your knives. It's not very safe to do that either. Especially if you have something in a metal pan. Don't do that. Use cutting board. Now this teak one, I don't have feet on because on this side it has this nice deep well uh, you can kind of see on the sides here. And you know that's great. So I can flip this over and use it whichever side I need to use or, or want to use that particular day. And, and that's also good for when you're doing chicken. Right, well, we'll get to cross-contamination. We'll get to cross-contamination, but you can flip yep. it over and continue. Yep. Now, there's still some other types of cutting boards out there. And these are kind of... What's the word I want, dear? Okay, here we go. I love the plastic ones that have different colors. Red for meat, blue for fish, green for veg. Okay, and that's what we're gonna talk about. The plastic ones. I have a couple I keep around. I have this big white guy and my red one. I use this red one quite a bit. It's just in the rotation with all the others. You know, it's showing its age. It is warping a bit. Now, what's the plus on this? Yeah, I can toss this in the dishwasher and it comes out fine. Uh, the negative of this, now this has rubber feet already built into it so it doesn't slide, but it warps. And even on this, I find sometimes my knife slips, even though it has a texture and it has lots of cuts in it from all the years I've used it. Sometimes I do slip a little easier than I do on wood and it's warping a bit. I'm getting to the point where it's about ready to go because I, I get sometimes like, oh, what's that little red flake? Oh, piece of cutting board. But it is handy and a lot of people do that. They, they like having uh, different colors. And it's fun to have different colors. And then I have this guy and I've had him a long time and I rarely use it. Um, it's got a couple marks in it, but I don't know. The, the well on it is very shallow. That's something you want to look for if you're going to buy a cutting board with a well. You want a deeper Let well. me answer this question. Hold on for a second. Okay. Drew has a valid question. Oh, Drew. And Drew says, I'm seeing comments you show on the screen, but not seeing those in chat. And Drew, that's because... Hold on. Uh -huh. There we go. There you uh, go. Any chat messages that come from Facebook, you won't see in YouTube and vice versa. So the chat messages that you're seeing are ones that come from YouTube. And actually, I'm going to show a bunch of them in a second. The ones where you see FB, Facebook, you will not see them in your chat. Yeah, those are things that people This is a limitation us. that we have right now with Facebook. They don't play nice with live stream unless you're willing to pay them thousands of dollars a month. And 
That's yeah. way no. beyond our budget. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, so anyway, yeah, I have this. This just fits in my cutting in my cutting board in my dishwasher. Uh, so I don't use it very often. Occasionally, I'll pull it out if I have like a big piece of fish to. That fillet, one skates a lot. It does, even on the uh, sticky stuff. It 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 moves around a lot, and it's warping. So, yeah, I I just I'm not a big fan of the plastic ones. I know a lot of people love them, but eh, meh. How often should I be replacing my plastic cutting boards? Well, that's, that's a good question. I think it depends on how quickly they wear out for you. Now, I've had this one, this red one, for a few years, and it's about ready. We've had this, what, five years maybe? Yeah, yeah. They, they usually say when it gets to the point where there are deep gouges, right. that you should replace it. And that's, mm -hmm. there are two reasons. First, bacteria sits in those gouges and even running through the dishwasher, can't get it clean. But when there's gouges, your knife tends to skip right across it. Yep, and it makes so, it unsafe. And unlike wood where you could sand it down or edge grain wood that we'll talk about, mm -hmm. uh, that's relatively self-healing, plastic is not. Right. If you run your hand across it and it feels really rough, it's time to replace it. Yeah, this is getting there. Plus it kind of rocks because it's warped. And uh, there are definitely some good size gouges in it. Right, before we go too much further, since we have... Let me get rid of these. Nine cause... people in Facebook chat, and right. 11 people in YouTube chat. Let's see who's here and for what. So let's throw up the map. And let's start with Danny. All right. Danny coming in loud and clear from Harrisburg. Awesome. Okay. And I guess the map is not working today. There oh. it is. Ooh, Horseheads, New York. Welcome, welcome. Let me go back to see if we know people in Horseheads. Oh, yes, we do. We know quite a few. Uh huh. Our neighbor in Cherry Hill. From Cherry Hill. Yay! All right, let's see what we got here. And then we've got Anne from Chicago. All right, welcome. Hmm, map is Glad not working to well you. today. Yeah, Hold no, on. It's let's not. see if I can zoom this sucker in. All right, now I think the map is having a bad day. Um, and Keisha from San Francisco. All right, welcome Keisha. And of course, we can't have a live stream without <laughs> without uh, Drew. Yay, we love Drew. We haven't seen Drew in a while. I'm glad and, you're here. Well, we will in a few weeks. I know, I know. And then, wow. Okay, let's not take myself there. Don't. Hold on, where's Hank? I know. I was Hank's just gonna here. say, is here Hank he is. In. Here's Hank. Hello from Phoenix, Arizona. The spring day, not quite hundred degrees yet, but they will be here by the end of April. I have no idea why it does not Going like for a high Phoenix, of 88 Arizona. Degrees today, the grill is clean for the season. Yeah, Hank, we've had a few days in the in the mid eighties too already, and we've uh -oh. been doing a lot of grilling. Kevin's itching for an invitation. Mackenzie likes prime rib. Well, you know, we have enough. <laughs> It's only, it's only nine pounds. <sighs> okay, but you gotta bring wine. Yeah. And, um, oh, okay. <laughs> we knew that, dear. We knew that was gonna happen. So. Let's talk about wood cutting boards a little bit more. I was going to do that next. Okay. So back to me, Bob. Back to you, Bob. Yay! So, you know, wooden cutting boards come in all shapes and sizes. I think the most common mistake people make, though, is they don't have a cutting board big enough. And I'm guilty of that, too. I mean, this is a fine board, but I do struggle sometimes. Um, how big of a board do I need? All right, good question, Janet. So, something like this. I mean, if you don't have the room for it, you don't. But if you have the room, a nice big board like this. You know how big that is? Uh, I want to say 12 by... That's 18 by 24. 18 by 24, okay. Um, you have more room to spread out. If you have something that might scatter a bit, you'll have a little more room on here. It's a little safer because if you work in the center, then you have all this room out here. Because it's just me and Phil, I do grab this a lot and I've gotten good at working just in the center. But sometimes, uh, quite often, I grab this out of habit and I'm chopping and cutting and all of a sudden they've got everywhere. It's like, why didn't I grab a big board, dummy? Um, so a nice 18 by 24 if you have the room for it. 
would be a good size. Hold on, dear. I need to turn you down. Evidently, oh. we're getting complaints that it's too loud. Oh. Should I talk softer? Okay, you're done. All right. Am I just being animated and talking I think you're loud? just being animated because <laughs> the settings haven't changed in a oh. while. Well, but there's all kinds of sizes of boards, too, um, and there's shapes. There's some cool ones back there. I know. So I have this, which is, there we go, a slice of a tree. Uh, and then, or at least it's made to look like a slice of a tree. It probably isn't quite a real slice, but I think I see a seam here. But it has little feet on it, and you could use this as a cutting board. I use it for serving, like for little cheese trays and things. Uh, but it's fun with the bark on it. Can you zoom in on that, dear? There you go. If you can see, it has real bark on it. And then we have, I have my little paddle type here. Again, this is great for a cheese board. You could use it because it's wooden, uh, but it has a nice finish on it, so I don't want to mar the finish with chopping. Mental reminder, take the price things off the bottom. There's no price on it, just some <laughs> stickers. Because this was a Christmas gift. And you have crazy things like this big long one. Again, really more for decoration or serving a nice big long cheese board or something on it. I wouldn't use this for chopping. Um, we used that as a polenta board. We did. We did use this for polenta once. How about the specialty martini from back there with the cheese stuff? This. That guy. Yes. A martini bottle that our it's son a, got it's us. It's a wine bottle. Did Kevin get us this yes. or did Lance and Ken? Put it down there. No, Kevin bought us that. Okay. So here's one shaped like a wine bottle. And then you spin it. If it'll do it for me. There we go. And inside it has a corkscrew, a little fork, a little sharp knife. Again, great for a little charcuterie board. Uh, I would put this. I have one of those little backpacks that has picnic stuff in it. So I would toss this in so I'd have a corkscrew and stuff uh, to serve as a picnic. And clearly this isn't something you, you could even use to chop on every day. But the point is they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and fun things. Hmm, what? not quite sure this one. Hank says, don't see any rings. Do you mean, I don't know what he means by rings. Do you mean like these? <laughs> True's right. got the right idea. Long cutting board is perfect for one of those really long Subway sandwiches at a party. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we should bring it to camp and uh, use it for happy hour. Oh, okay. He said he didn't see rings in the tree board. Oh, yeah, right, right. Which makes me think, well, yeah, they're here, kind of. Here and here. Yeah, it's probably manufactured. We yeah. bought that from uh, at home, so at who here. knows? Yeah. But it's a fun little thing. It makes me think of a slice of a tree. Now we got this silly thing when we closed on this house and uh, the builders made this for us and they spelled Phil's name wrong. And but. actually, let me comment on those type of boards that are etched. They're really only for decoration. You really yeah. should never cut on one of those. Yeah. What happens is your knife gets caught in the indentation mm -hmm. and then skips. And you can do some serious damage to your hand yep. that's on the other side. Just yep. saying. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here we go. What's next? Oh, my mom has a big heavy teak cutting board. It must be 25 years old now. Yeah, I'm hoping to have this a good 20 years. Uh, I've only had this a short time. And it is slowly becoming my favorite for down here especially. So not that I'm going to give these guys up yet. But uh, I can see myself changing this up, up in the main kitchen, too, uh, maybe even at camp. All this. right, so let's do this one because this is a long explanation. Right. I knew about this one ahead of time. Right, cocktail first? Okay. Sounds like I do. Well, wait a minute then. Hold on. <laughs> let's both have a cocktail first. All right. Back to you. Okay. I changed Back to my me, screens to my Facebook page. All right. Where is it? Now, we knew about this one in advance, and we prepped, because oh, this God, was asked a few weeks ago. Oh, end grain versus edge grain. What is the difference? 
Okay, help me out, dear, because... Where's I'm, your little training my device? Little, hold on, hold on. Okay. So let, let's show this. The TIG board, the TIG is board. Edge, grain. edge grain. So that's what this little piece of wood is. This is the edge. And so this is pieces of TIG that are glued together. And this is the edge. When you see an end grain, you're seeing... Okay, so I have a picture. That. We don't, we don't own one, so I had to get a picture of it. It looks like that. Right. What's the difference? Well, uh, hopefully I'll get this right. So the end grain can be a little softer on your knife because you're cutting really on the grain. It's a little more forgiving. It's a little more Flip healing. it over. The other side's a little bit better. There you go. That okay. shows you. There you go. Um, it's a little softer on your knife, and they're very beautiful. However, and correct me if I'm wrong, dear, they don't last as long as edge grain because all this shows more of the pores in the wood, and that just soaks up moisture. So they tend to warp easier. Actually, and a little break easier down. than that. Edge end grain boards tend to be thicker. They have to be because they're cutting little ends off right. and gluing them together. So they tend to be much thicker, two to three inches or higher, yep. and much, much heavier. They are very popular with butchers and very heavy knife users because they are the most gentle on the knives, but they require the most care, yeah. including oiling, which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. And because it's hundreds of pieces glued together, versus half a dozen, they tend to decay pretty quickly if they're not well treated. Now, the other plus side is there are some beautiful yeah. uh, end grain boards. You will find them as checkerboards and designs. They really are beautiful pieces. But I don't believe they're practical for home chefs. They are beautiful and they are much more expensive than a regular board. Yeah, a, you know, our like, teak like, board right like there. This was $79. Mm -hmm. The Ed version of that is 195 mm. Same size. And I don't remember what this guy cost us, but it was probably maybe 20 25 Yeah, a little bit more. That's not bamboo, it's oak, so we'd probably pay 25 for it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the difference between edge and end grain. All right, let me put my little prop away. And that's our process for the day. Okay, I only use plastic cutting boards. I am a germaphobe. If it can't go in the dishwasher, I won't use it. So, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. If that's what you're comfortable with, then, then do it. Absolutely. Scientifically, there's no difference in uh, the cleaning of boards and the between wooden and plastic or bamboo and plastic. And let me bring that other question up that was ahead of time okay. for that reason. I was always told it is unsanitary to work with raw chicken on a wood board, but I see cooks do it all the time. Absolutely. And so here's the thing. Cutting boards do require maintenance, wooden ones anyway. When they get deeply gouged, you get to sand them and oil them, and you should oil them regularly with a food safe oil. Um, using raw meat and fish or chopping vegetables, you cut your fish on this or your chicken, what are you gonna do? You're gonna wash the board, I hope, in warm soapy water. That alone is going to get rid of 99.999% of any bacteria that might be there. If you are really worried about it, you could then wipe it down with a solution of bleach and water. Now the solution would be one tablespoon of bleach to a whole gallon of water. And then you just wipe it down, rinse it off, dry it well. The other thing is wood, and especially bamboo, they have antibacterial properties. Uh, it's been proven that bamboo, especially if there's any bacteria, it kind of draws it in and kills it. Um, there are a number of studies, including yeah. a recent one that was done by uh, America's Test Kitchen, Kitchen yep. where they cut raw chicken on wood mm -hmm. and they cut it on plastic right. and used normal cleaning methods of just soap and water uh -huh. on both Yep. and sent it out to the lab, and the labs could not find any right. significant difference between wood or plastic, assuming you are using good 
cleaning habits. Right. That now, one is no better than the other. The only other drawback is occasionally there is a greater chance in the plastic boards when you have those deep gouges, that bacteria will get all the way in there and then it won't get washed out or anything because it's so deep in the plastic itself and that could cause cross-contamination. But you know, what I do personally, if I know, okay, I need to cut my, my chicken and my vegetables and this, I'll do all the vegetables first, wipe down the board so it's dry, then I do the chicken, then I wash it. If I'm really busy, I need to do both, boards like this, I just flip it over. Let me do my chicken first, I need to get it done. Flip it over, do my veg. All right, my dad used to make cutting boards. He would spend days on a single board. They were a work of art, but I was scared to cut on them and scratch them. Oh, that's sweet. That's nice that your dad did that. That's really neat. I like that. I would feel the same way. Jolene, I go to flea markets and buy unusual cutting boards. There are some great crafters at some of these markets. Yeah, there are. There are people that do that as a hobby. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Okay. But I would probably use them as serving boards. Here's one. I okay. just typed this in, so if I type out it. Typo. Okay. Get over it. I need my sippy cup. Hold on. Kathy, I cringe when I see chefs on TV cutting meat on wooden cutting boards and then cutting something else. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to answer that. I need a sip of water. Hold on. What you're not seeing, and we do this too from experience. So let's say Lydia Bastianich, she's cutting the chicken on her board, cut, cut, cut. And then all of a sudden she's chopping celery. What you didn't see is they stopped the cameras. Uh, the culinary team, because all of those big TV shows have a whole team of people that come in, scrub and sanitize, either replace the board or they take it and sanitize. And I have seen her, especially when she's doing things live, just flip it over. And now I have a clean side to do whatever else I need to do. And, and you may not see her wipe down her blade or wash her hands every time, but they do. And we've had to do that too. It, it, it's, you don't see it, but it really does happen. Sharon, I'm on a budget. How much should I spend on a good cutting board? Well, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, a board like this is gonna be more expensive, but it's an investment. But if you can only afford $25, then get yourself a $25 cutting board or a $10 cutting board. Uh, they really aren't that expensive. Um, it depends on where you go to, you know, shop around. You don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars or thousands even, you could, but spend what you can and get the best that you can. I personally would avoid those little flimsy cutting mats. Uh, you know, you can get like a pack of three for like $5.99. If that's all you can afford, then, then go for it. But uh, if you can afford something more than that, I would. This is an interesting one. What's that? Plus it came in from my text, so it's someone who knows us. So I can't figure out who this is. Arlene, my son is a prep chef. He says they use plastic boards to throw them away every six weeks instead of worrying about maintenance. And it's also when they get their knives sharpened. Wow, I don't know that I've ever worked in a restaurant that would replace cutting boards that frequently. Um, maybe it happens now, I, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've worked in a restaurant, but okay. That seems a bit excessive to me. Oh, and here's Hank to confirm that. Yeah, health department require one to replace a plastic board with deep, visible deep cuts. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> How about a Ouija cutting board? Well, you know, that would be great, Drew, um, except then your chicken comes back to life and... and uh, <laughs> he spent way too much time here at our Halloween yeah. parties. <laughs> Actually, there are Ouija cutting boards out there. I've seen them online. All right, I'm going to do some cooking soon. Hold on. Let's right. get through a couple more Can of you these. sand a cutting board to remove the nice knife marks and stains? Absolutely. Absolutely, you can. A wooden one. You can't do it with plastic. Uh, but you can do that with a wooden one. Uh, actually, it, it's kind of recommended as part of the maintenance. If you have like a big one like this, especially, that you want to last for years and years, you could lightly sand it down, wash it, oil it. Mm -hmm. I know you should oil a wood board occasionally. Is there a preferred oil to use? There are on the market food-safe mineral oils that you can get that are expressly for cutting boards. 
I wouldn't use like an olive oil or vegetable oil. Okay, there we go. I used to olive oil on my wood boards until I learned the hard way that it can go rancid. I mean, you can, and there's always that chance. You could use olive oil, some chefs do. But there are, are food safe mineral oils that won't go rancid that are, are perfectly safe for us. If there's any in the board and you get some in you, it's fine. And Hank says, yeah, maybe I, I, depending on how thick plastic board is, it may be sanded down one or two times. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Plastic's so cheap, I throw it out. Yeah. All right, you want to do some nice skills? We have a request here. Sure, because I said we'd be cooking and I got to get cooking. I'm trying to get better at knife skills. Dicing an onion is my challenge, even with watching your skills video. Okay, so here's the thing. We're having people for dinner tonight and I need to make a salad. So, ugh. I'm gonna make a salad and do some chopping for you. Right. Let's do the diced onion since it yes. was a request. I have a nice big box of, from the produce market. And there's a big onion here. Okay. Right down the center. Keep your knife steady. We'll discard that side. We have two ends here, the root end this is the blossom end. This is where the green part comes. Flat side down. We're going to cut off the blossom end. Claw hand, keeping everything in, holding it. Pinch and grip. And you can use your finger as a guide. And we're going to chop off the top of it. Right? Easy. Now we just want to peel off the skin. And with onions, sometimes the first layer is kind of yucky, and this is, so we're going to peel off this first layer. Make sure to get that little membrane off in there because that could be slippery on your knife. Now you could rip this off. I usually do. You could keep it and then you have a nice handle. But really, now we have a flat side. Keep it down. Some chefs, a lot of the old ways, if you want to do a fine dice, they tell you to cut perpendicular to the board like this, two or three. I find you don't really have to unless you need a really, really super fine dice, but it's already segmented. What we're going to do is we're going to cut down from the top. Claw hand, holding it steady, sharp knife with just the tip, straight down to whatever side size you want. Try to keep it an even size. Don't cut all the way through the root. Just straight down. Being careful. Okay. Now, claw hand. Straight down. And look, you have diced onion that will come apart and they're all about the same size. How thick you cut them, you try and keep it around the same thickness, and you just go straight down. And now you have a diced onion. And in the end of the day, sure, these are not those perfect little cubes you see, but it doesn't matter because this is going to get cooked up in something anyway. Oh, this is a strong onion. That's how you dice an onion. Oh, you know what I don't have down here, dear? What's that? I don't have a bench scraper. Okay. It's okay. I can use this. You're going to have to because yep. I'm tied in here. I can't quite leave. I know. You can't scamper upstairs. I got wires. I know. So, well, let's remember, tell the A-girl to put that on the list. Oh, here's yeah. an... Here. I'm using the spatula or fish, fish spatula or bench scraper normally. Why? Is there a trick to cut an onion without it irritating your eyes? Well, Drew, using a sharp knife will help. Uh, and some onions are stronger than others. All of the, you know, soak it in water, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, who has time for that? It really doesn't. Uh, but different cutting methods will make it less. Now, when you're finally chopping like that, you're cutting through a lot of those cell walls. And so it really expands. The other thing is the only place we cut this root was here the one time. If you cut through that as you get closer, this is where all of the 
what are they called? The sulfurous, the, it's, it's, it's their little defense mechanism. And that's what it is that, that hurts your eyes and makes you cry. That onion juice smell. Thank you for making the pasta video. You convinced me to try to make it myself. I want to surprise my mother. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. That was a fun thing to take. So I'm going to start making my salad for dinner. Do we have anything else to talk about? I guess we do. But we got some questions All about right. well, life questions. in general. And uh, can I show them my next new trick I learned just recently? Sure. And some cooking. So we did whole basic skills on how to prepare avocados. And one of the things that most people do is they cut it around the equator, twist it, take the one side off, and then in the pit you whack it and turn it, and that's a little dangerous, right? Taking your big chef's knife, whacking your hand with it. Here's a trick I learned. I hope these are ripe enough. They're right on the edge. So, hold it firmly. You are, again, going to go around the equator like that. Now, you're going to turn it up on end. So you have the slice here, right? Hold it firmly, and we're going to do that again. Rotate it right around your knife. And now look, it comes off in quarters. How easy is that? And no more of this whack it into your hand. It's super simple. And I find these are easier to peel off than scooping out with a, a spoon. Hank is just confirming your onion. Yes, the size of the slice determines the size of the dice. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, here we go. Warm and fuzzy. How's Maxwell fitting in with your other cats? Oh, Maxwell is doing well. For the most part, they all get along. He is out and about more. Uh, he stands up to... We have one of our ninjas can be... Well, I don't like to use bad words. Um, but he could be a butthole when he wants to be. And Maxwell is standing up to him more and more, and they've become like best buds. They will bop each other in the face and then run around, and but there hasn't been any growling or hissing that I've heard in quite a while. And right, what else are we chopping into this salad? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Cliff and Alan are hungry. And the kids, if they're coming. Of course, this might, I may not put this in the salad because it's going to turn brown by then. But I'll chop it anyway. And I can't get up to get you lemon juice. No, you can't. No, you I can't, dear. My editing yes, you station are. Here. I know. That's fine. That's fine. While you're doing that, why don't you talk about what our next live stream episode is? Okay, I'm sorry. Ooh. That was a strong onion. Now my nose is oh, itchy. What is our next live stream? It's all about cocktails, right? All about yes. starting a home bar. So, what basics should you have in your home uh, for entertaining? Uh, if you want to start your own, have your own little home bar, even if you live in a tiny little apartment like I used to, I had a certain core things that I can make a lot of different drinks from. So we're going to be talking about uh, things to have at home in your bar, and we're going to be making some cocktails uh, and some nibbly things a long time. And the real basics of what you need and what you don't need right, to get started. Right. And people think they need to spend hundreds of dollars for alcohol when yep. every drink can be made from the same seven bottles. Pretty much, yeah. That's why I, I, I cringe when I see some of these, these cocktails. And they look really good. And then it's like, use cream of violet. What's that? From Milo. I took your shrimp cake recipe and put it inside wonton wrappers and fried them. Yum. Thank you. And you know, that's funny because I'm making that. I'm doing the exact same thing tonight. But I'll be steaming mine instead of frying them. So lemon juice, I was just about to ask about preventing avocado from browning, or is it simply just best to cut it last? No, you want to use either lemon or lime juice, and that will help help it keep keep it from browning. Distigulated water? Acidulated water. Acidulated water. Acidulated, not add. So it's water with acid. You could just drop them in there, or you could just squirt lime juice right on it. But if you want to um, acidulate it water, and that's true for a lot of things. 
What else we got back there for um, you? Ooh, I see fennel. Yes. Let's cut some fennel. That's a great big old head of fennel. I love fennel. A lot of people don't. Now these, you could use in salad, and I may save these and put these in the salad later, or in the dressing. So we'll put them back there. But you know, fennel has that, fennel, fennel has that licorice taste to it, the anise taste. It's usually called Italian celery. I'm just taking off this tough outer, outer layer because it just doesn't look good. And I did wash this, but it just... Now, I don't like licorice, so I don't like that, but I like it raw in a salad, then I can tolerate it. But once it's cooked, it gets very strong licorice flavor. Uh, see, that's, that's you, dear, because I find when you cook it, the flavor gets milder and nuttier. I like to treat this kind of like celery. Right down. Take out the core. Because that's tough. You're a fan club. Hi, Ted. Hi, Ted. And hi, Jerry. Fennel is fantastic in the sound. Yes. Yes, it is. So I hope you and, you and Jerry are well. It's so good to see you. Thank you. Got to get them down here to South Jersey. Yes, we do. We do have to have them. Or we're going to need to drive up to the city and visit. That's fine, too. We can do that. We can do both. I'm sure they would come down to South Jersey. All right. Let's add some fennel. I was thinking about making this pretty and arranged, but you know what? I'm just going to do my favorite, scatter it about artfully, messily. Oh, that's what they call rustic, huh? No, rustic is lazy. <laughs> I'm gonna put this whole head in, dear. I love it. You can pick it out. I didn't say I didn't like it. I just like it raw. No, I didn't take the core out of this piece. That's Here's right. an interesting question. Who's that? And it's actually pretty valid because the answer is not what you would think. Okay. When making a charcuterie board, is it okay to both cut and serve on the same board? I'm not sure what you mean, but if you were using a board like this to cut and then you would serve on it, then absolutely. If you're using something, you know, like this guy, um, the only thing you'd really be cutting on it would be cheese, and that's okay because you're not really chopping, you're just breaking the cheese apart. But yeah, if, if you're... All the same foods are going to be touching when you right. put it on the board anyway, right. so there's no reason why you can't cut it and... Use right. the same board. All right. How about some red pepper? About time for another knife skills episode. Yes, it is. While you're doing that, you want to talk about what we're working on next? Oh, Tuesday's gosh. episode. What are we okay, well, so we have two in the can, which is unusual for us. Welsh uh, rabbit. Next up is one of my favorite dishes, and some of you are going to be upset with me. So, you know, if you ever heard of Welsh rabbit, it's not really rabbit; it's rare bit. Basically, it's cheesy toast. It's toast with a cheese sauce on it, and it's a great snack or a starter. I made a little different version of it, and I'll be honest with you, I was inspired by the two fat ladies. So it's take on their recipe, and it's more of a souffle. So it's, it's on this wonderful bread, and it gets a little puffy, and it's cheesy and eggy, and, and it's just wonderful. And then what about the one we did last night? Last night, <laughs> we <laughs> set the fire alarm For the off. first time, and it was always a fear when we built the studio in the basement. I said, what about setting off the fire alarms? We're doing uh, a grilled asparagus Caesar. And it, it's two of my favorite things. It, it's asparagus season here in New Jersey, or it will be in a couple weeks more. But it's spring. I love asparagus. I love it grilled. And I love Caesar salad. It's my favorite salad in the world. So I, I thought, why not put them both together? So last night when we were filming and uh, grilling the asparagus, the smoke alarms might have gone off. 
for a little bit, but it was fine. It had to happen sooner or later. I was just to say, it needs something red. Yes, it does, and I've got more. I'm going to add an orange one, too. I've got I see cucumbers back there and yep. tomatoes. Yep, and, yep, yep. And I see an orange pepper there, too. Yep. And I have yellow. It'd be a good salad tonight. Yeah. Do we have any chunk blue cheese? No, we oh. do not. Maybe I need to go to the store. You can, because I'm not leaving this house again and going to that crazy shop right. <laughs> no, sir. Well, Kevin's on his way over to eat. We can say, bring blue cheese. Oh, that's way. right. Yeah, bring us, Kevin, bring us a chunk of blue cheese. I need a cocktail. Hey, where were we on time? Oh, we have five minutes left. Yes, I know. We put a new clock up here, and I can see it, and I really like it. All right. How about some cuke? This is one of those, uh, they call them English cucumbers or hothouse cucumbers. They're sometimes called seedless. They're not exactly seedless, but I love them because the skin is very tender and the seeds are smaller and easier to digest. And I like the flavor better than homegrown. And you don't have regular to peel cucumbers. them. You do not have to peel them. And that's... The seeds, unlike regular cucumbers, the seeds are much bigger. These are easier to digest. For some of us with issues, that's an important thing. I like putting cucumbers in water. Can you take a second and explain the claw that you're doing? So when you're cutting, you want to make a claw with your hand. Pull those fingers in, especially that little pinky. Because a lot of times that little pinky slips out and you slice it open. So what I like to do, and I'm doing something like this, claw hand, the knife stays stationary. Up and down, up and down. Motion of the ocean, just follow the blade, but up and down. I'm, my thumb is in the back of the cucumber. I've got my claw here, touching the knife. And now as I'm advancing it with my thumb, but I'm keeping my fingers all curled under. And now I'm getting pretty consistent slices. Now you see chefs, those are people who are cooking 25 hours a day. They've been doing it for years. The claw hand is the most important thing. And it feels uncomfortable at first but then you get used to doing it. It's the same thing with the how to hold a knife, the pinch and grip method. So many people are like back here, we're doing this and well, you know. Can I get out the red marker? Really, I can't control what people do. I can just suggest, but it takes, it takes getting used to. All right. What else do we want in this salad? I've got, got some tomatoes back there. I do. You don't do anything with that. I know. I've got a whole bowl of all these multicolored tomatoes, browns and yellows and pale yellow and orange and red. We're just going to scatter these about. I could be refined and cut them all in half, but we've only got a few minutes left. And we got to roast in the oven. I do roast in the oven, and we still have to tidy up upstairs, set the table. I got to put the potatoes on. All right, this must be somebody who knows us again. Okay. When do you guys start at your campsite in the mountains? In three weeks, dear? May 5th. May 5th, yeah. And finally, I'm ready. I, I, I have a friend up at camp, Danny, and I'm sure he's not watching because he's working today. But all winter long... He, he's our neighbor at camp, and all winter long, all I've heard on Facebook, are you ready? I'm ready to go to camp yet. I'm ready. Are you ready? Because I want to go to camp. Dude, calm down. It's January. I don't want to think about camp. Yeah. But now, it's almost here. I'm ready. I'm ready to see my friends. I'm ready to see Drew and a lot of other people. Which reminds me, um, Jonathan O'Donnell from camp. Drew, you know who that is. Uh wants to host a tea party with us, like a full British high tea. 
some quiet weekend. We love you too, Drew. We'll see you soon, absolutely, in a few weeks. So I thought that was a great idea. Maybe we could do uh, an LCTV, maybe a live stream for, let's host a live tea, a high tea. Not up there. I'm not moving this equipment all no, up there. No, 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 no. We could do a live stream for that up there, but it could. we could do it here. If we could have some people over to be, you know, guest stars and sure, a live studio audience. Sure, we the couch over here. Yeah. Even have Drew as long as we're not cooking cats. Oh, yeah, Drew. <laughs> we don't cook cats here in this house. So... But yeah, that, that, that could be a future episode too coming up. So what do we have coming up? We have uh, our next live stream is all about cocktails. You no, know, all about making a home bar. Okay, whatever. Bars lead to cocktails. It's just the truth. We have Welsh Rarebit coming up. We have um, the Asparagus Caesar coming up. We have some new basic skills coming up too. We're going to show you how to make compound butters. And... Uh, in this case, we don't talk, man. We came up with a whole list of them this morning. So you're going to be seeing some more basic skills out of us, too. All right, I think it's just about that time. I see 4.30 on the clock, dear. Hold on, let me get my I missed break. some of our regulars. Like, I, I hope Dixie and Phil were in. They well, usually are. Well, it says we have 14 people watching us on... Oh, that's awesome. ...on YouTube, and we have nine people watching us oh. in Facebook. So we Yay. Have 21 people watching us live, which awesome is pretty sauce. good. Yeah, that is. That's awesome. One of these days, we're going to get Facebook and YouTube to talk to each other. Yeah. But yeah. right now, there's a, a, a financial issue to do that. And B, most people who try to do it, it does not end well. Facebook is not very accommodating um, of 16 by 9, 1080. They want Whatever square. That and they want 720 and, and, and... No one knows what that means it's, it's a Yeah, it's a juggle. 16 by 9 by blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when I say mise en place and your eyes glaze over. Oops, here we go. Let me get this right. Good show. See you all in the next live stream. Thanks, Hank. We'll see you soon. Here's our salad. Kind of a basic salad, but that's okay. It's pretty and colorful. And I love doing it on big platters like this. And uh, how simple was it? That looks good. Congratulations. Thank you, Ted. Thank you so much. We really need to get together with you and Jerry. We need to make that happen. We tried the one day when we were in New York, but we'll make it happen. All right. So we will see you in two weeks for a live stream. We'll see you on Tuesday for our regular episodes, Friday for our cocktails or a basic skill, and from Phil Gordimer. And from Peter Lee. Until next time, thanks for joining us. Cheers. Cheers.